Today I'm bringing you chapter 2 of Do You Hate Yourself, my most watched Ayazawa story. Um, I hope you enjoyed it just as much as you did the first part. And uh, yeah, here we go. But before I dive right into it, please remember to watch the video until the end. Like or dislike and comment something down below. This is the best way you support me indirectly because this is how you make my position in the YouTube algorithm better and the YouTube algorithm is the thing that decides, hey, if new people should see my videos or not. Um, you can also support me directly. Links are down in the description to my merch store and Patreon. Now, this is the cute animal picture of the day here to remind you to do exactly what I just told you. Watch the video until the end, like or dislike. Let's get right into it, shall we? You yawned. You haven't slept last night. You are naturally excited for today. When did he say he would come? 9 p.m.? In all honesty, you didn't believe it, but the prospect of it actually happening was simply too sweet to ignore. It had been a few years since you last dated someone. You were completely unsure as to how to act. After all, when your marriage fell apart, your life did too. Maybe you were just having false hope. And if you were, you were unsure of whether or not you would take the rest of your sleeping pills once again. And this time you'd make sure it was enough. Like a marionette, you wandered through your small apartment, moving various things in an attempt to make it look tidy. In truth, not even the prospect of the state seemed to raise your spirits enough to actually do more than that. Your ex-husband had called you lazy for it, and your therapist just called it a symptom of something greater. Something you needed to fight. After a few hours had passed, you stared at your just ever so slightly more tidy place. Why half the time you just stood there, staring, wondering what to tidy up next, you didn't know. You probably should take a shower too, right? Your bathroom was tiny. It just barely fit your bathtub. Looking at it made you feel... something. After scratching away an itch on the back of your head, you realized there was no way around it. You locked the bathroom's door, just in case, and turned on the warm water. The heater next to the bathtub began to rumble as it began to heat the liquid while you took off your clothes. After exposing your vulnerable flesh, you stepped under the hot streams. The water pours down on you. It drips by your side as your mind fades into a dullness and everything feels like a foggy illusion. The sensation of the steamy water calms you, takes your mind off things, all the things you honestly didn't care about. Eventually, you decided that this had to be enough. After grabbing a towel and getting dry, and a change of clothes, you still didn't feel any cleaner than you did before. At least your head stopped itching. After that, there was nothing you could do. You sat down on your couch. A tacky thing you got from your grandma. Probably the oldest thing you owned. Yet, somehow, it still felt new. Heck, it even smelled new. What had she been doing to the couch to keep it in this condition? In fact, even after being your couch for two years, it still was like that. 
you are starting to think that it might be a cursed object. If your marriage hadn't crumbled a year before you got it, you would have made it responsible for it. Your eyes wandered over to your piano. The words spoken by your neighbor Akira still floating in your head. You bit your lower lip. Then you stood and walked over to your door. First, you looked through the eye hole. Before you stretched the empty stairwell. Next, you opened the door, walking through the dark corridor. Until reaching Akira's door. You gulped. And then with your heart almost bursting, you pressed your ear against his door. Silence. Slowly you inhaled, your heart almost bursting from your chest. If someone were to see you like this, what would they think? creepy cat lady stalking her neighbor. The silence was deafening. Suddenly you heard a loud car honking from outside, making you jump and almost scream. You quickly retreated into your apartment. You were out of breath and needed just a tiny moment of quiet. Sighing, you walked over to the piano, sat on the small stool in front of it, and took one long breath. Once your heartbeat normalized, you began stroking the keys. A familiar melody, a song your father told you. The song that you always played when you needed to achieve a certain headspace. Your mind drifting into a web of emptiness that you wished you would never return from. You kept on playing after the meowing of the cats began outside. Your quirk doing wonders as per usual. But right now, you didn't play for them. You played for yourself. Something your therapist had told you to do, after all. Huh. When did you first start playing for the cats and not for the sake of music? Honestly, you didn't remember. It felt better than you expected. Eventually, however, you stopped, your eyes opening slowly. It was feeding time for your fuzzy friends. While filling up their bowls on your balcony, a thought returned to you. The date, you muttered out loud. One of the cats put its head under your hand and meowed, as if giving you encouragement. The cat was the only stray you would visit on a regular basis. You named him Teacup. His deep yellow eyes pierced through your cold shell of indifference. You're right, you whispered gently before standing up. Erasure Head, a hero. The man who saved your life was going to come visit tonight. A date. Your date. He had requested snacks and chicken tendies. Like a damn child. It had been an obvious joking matter, but you wanted to avoid a potential disappointment. Inside your kitchen, the fridge was almost empty. However, your anxiety prevented you from going outside to get the necessary food. At least there were still some frozen pizzas. With shaking hands, you put the two of them in your oven. 
just in case he preferred one over the other. Then you went on the search for snacks. You always had a few hidden, since you rarely left your apartment. They were... emergency food. Potato chips, cookies, popcorn. Wait, which one of these was the most date-ish? Maybe all three together? This somehow sounded like a plan. Your heart rate nervously increased once more after placing the snacks on the table together with your silverware. And then you sat down next to the table, facing your balcony door. The minutes to his supposed arrival take down. Teacup the stray somehow had managed to get inside your apartment. He was sitting on your TV while staring at you. The clock turned to 9 p.m., then 9.10, and then 9.30. Your heart sank into a familiar cold embrace. Staring at your still empty plate, you began to silently sob. The entire thing must have been a joke after all. Your eyes wander to the nightstand next to your bed. Your pills. They were still there. As if beckoning you. This time you would make sure to take. To take. The unmistakable noise of someone hitting glass threw you off your thoughts of self-destruction and you walked over to your balcony. There stood your razor head, but something was off. He had a slightly crooked stance. You couldn't make out his face and something was dripping off his arm. With a shaking body you let him in. He grunted as a greeting and immediately walked over to your sofa and sat down on it. Next thing you noticed was that he was bleeding not heavily, but enough to be concerning. Uh, sorry I'm late. Uh, I hate being late. He groaned. Got uh, into a little tussle. Your hands shot over your mouth in shock. Uh, you got some bandages? He asked. You nodded and quickly ran into your bathroom... You had a small first aid kit in a small box above your bathroom mirror. Running back into your living room, he took off his black shirt. Not only allowing you to see his toned body, but also his wounds. First you doused a paper towel with disinfectant and gently rubbed it over his cuts. He sighed in pain whenever the burning liquid made contact with his skin. What happened to you? You sighed, concerned. Trying to push back your anxiety. Uh, villain. You blinked. <laughs> I thought your name is Erasurehead and not Captain Obvious. Your gaze shifted up to his face. While his expression was cold, his lips were mildly twitching. You were glad that your little attempt at comedy was not taken as an insult. After the wound was clean and bandaged up, you finally took a breather. It felt as if you hadn't breathed for 30 minutes straight, and your body was desperate for air. <laughs> Good job, like a true pro, he said reassuringly. You bit your lower lip. You had to know. Right here, right now. Is this supposed to be a date? You asked. Uh, only if you wanted to. In truth, he wasn't interested in a relationship. But after saving you from a permanent solution for a temporary problem, 
he wouldn't mind staying with you. He felt as if it was his responsibility now, as the man who saved your life from yourself. Now he just wanted to make you happy. A feeling he hasn't felt in a long time. I made pizza. I know you wanted tendies. You said while looking at the ground. Great. He simply answered. What kind? You gulped. I only had two in the freezer. Put the one really low heat. Takes longer that way, but when the clock hit 9 p.m., they were ready. Turned off the stove before waiting for you. He sighed in relief. Good. I ate burnt pizza. You gave a low chuckle. I mean, anything burnt tastes like shit. He looked at your prepared table. Mind if I said? You nodded. Sure, sure, I, I, I get the food. He went back into the kitchen. There was still some wine left in one of the cupboards. A singular bottle that you had saved up for a good occasion. The drink was roughly five years old by now. But then again it was unopened. It was wine. It won't spoil. It will simply taste better. Right? Then you quickly heated up the pizzas before putting them on a tablet with the wine and carried it into your living room. Erasriad was sitting at the table. You notice his outstretched hand. He was gently petting the black little stray. Suddenly, a tear rolled down your cheek. After years, you were making a meal for a man. A man who on the onset looked to be decent. Were you about to do the same mistake? Fall for a man not worth caring for. The hero's hand slipped further down the cat's head. Your eyes widened. Teacup actually allowed the man to scratch his chin. It was heartwarming. You gulped and inhaled sharply, regaining your composure. With a forced smile, you walked to the table. Here. You said as you placed on the tablet. The hero's eyes shifted from the first to the second pizza. Which one do you want? He asked while you took the chair to his opposite. Uh, I, I, I don't know, was your honest answer. I guess I like both. It were a Mediterranean chicken pizza and a tuna one. Erasure had grinned. And what's your favorite? He asked the cat. I assume tuna. You were almost jealous of the cat, but seeing him interact with your feline companion so lovingly made your heart jump a bit. He took the plate with the tuna pizza while you grabbed the other one. Quietly, you two began to eat. Occasionally, he took a tiny bit of tuna and gave it to the cute stray who happily accepted the food. There wasn't much talking. You two both weren't into that. Especially if neither of you were sure if there would ever be a second date. Neither of you wanting to waste time. But the little he allowed himself to share, the more you started liking the man. You learned his real name, Shota Aizawa, that he worked both as a hero and a teacher, and that he was the adoptive father of the young girl who had been kidnapped by the Yakuza. His eventful life made your ordinary one look like an absolute shit show. At least the wine was good. After the meal was over, the conversation turned towards your own life and experiences. In your slightly drunken state, 
you pretty much told him everything. Your first marriage. How it fell apart. Your childhood. Your parents. Your friends you lost throughout your life. And your wasted opportunities. Hmm. I can see why you would want to end your life. He spoke softly after listening to your story. But I think you shouldn't. You blushed, mostly because of the wine. Eventually your conversation moved location. You were sitting on opposite ends of your tacky little sofa. His soft-spoken, borderline, edgy attitude making you blush almost every 30 seconds. He wasn't a flirt, yet he somehow managed to make his dumb comments sound like vaguely flirty hints. Could he actually be interested in you, or was it just pity? So you decided to risk something. The conversation moved to the school duties and adventures. Apparently, there was more going on than the media was talking about. And while he recited an incident at a training camp, you used the opportunity to move closer to him. He didn't push back. He accepted it. And he smiled softly. Maybe life wasn't bad after all. Slowly, you closed your eyes. You awoke in a cold sweat. You were hyperventilating. Your eyes moved to your digital clock. 3 a.m. What the hell happened? You quickly moved your head around. You were seemingly alone. You rubbed your eyes. Yes, you were still at home, so you weren't kidnapped. Then you noticed a note right next to you. It was too dark to read it. Quietly you crawled out of bed. Your head was killing you. On wobbly legs you walked over to the light switch. Click. The light was almost blinding and you scratched the back of your head. Then you heard a groaning from your sofa. It was Aizawa curled up in what seemed like a sleeping bag. With a blush, you turned the light off. Why was he still here? Wait, how did you get into your bed? What was happening? As quiet as you could muster in your state of hangover, you waddled over to your bathroom. Turning on the light, you read the note. Hey, you fell asleep on my lap last night. I carried you to your bed. You are surprisingly light. Uh, anyways, I hope you enjoyed the evening with me. I sure did. I hope we can repeat it. I'm going to take a nap on your sofa and we'll leave early in the morning. Should you ever be interested in another date, on the back of this note is my number. Shota Aizawa You bit your lower lip and clutched the piece of paper. What was this feeling? Were you... happy? <laughs>